Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the TGS Motor Company Limited Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Bartley Wala and Kirani Securities India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participants line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Annamalai Jairaj for his opening remark. Thank you. From Batliwala and Kadani Securities India Private Limited. Thank you and over to you sir. Uh thank you Sajal. Good evening everyone. On behalf of BNC Securities, welcome to fourth year of 24 fourth year conference call of CS Motor Company Limited. I also take this opportunity to welcome the senior management team of CS Motor Company Limited. We have with us today Mr. K. N. Rada Krishna, Director and Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. K. Gopal Desai, Chief Financial Officer. I will now invite Mr. K. N. Rada Krishna for his opening remarks to be followed by question and answer session. Over to you, sir. Good evening. Uh, thanks for uh, joining. Uh, thanks to all of you for joining today. First of all, we are extremely happy to inform you that uh, the company has won top honors uh, in all, almost all categories in JD Power 2024 India Two Wheeler Initial Quality Study and Appeal. And we are extremely thankful to all our customers for their trust, encouragement, and uh, securing the top positions across multiple product segments consistently for several years demonstrates the customer confidence on our product. This is also a year. Last year, 23-24 was the year where we achieved significant milestones in terms of sales, revenue, and profit. First time we have surpassed sales of over 4 million units of two-wheelers. Posted all-time highest revenue of 31,776 crores. Profit of uh, rupees 270 to so 2,781 crores, despite uh, many challenges in the international market. Now let me let me give you first about the full year results and then I'll talk about few four. As I highlighted, the revenue from the operations grew by 20% from 26,378 crores to 31,776 crores. Domestic ICE two-wheeler sales numbers grew by 19% as against the industry growth of 13%. EV volume has doubled. From ninety-seven thousand during last year to one lakh ninety-four thousand this year. IB two-wheeler sales declined by three three percent over the last year, as against the industry decline of almost five percent. In terms of uh, profit, our operating EBITDA improved by hundred basis points from ten point one percent during last year to eleven point one percent during this year under review. During the year, the company posted the highest ever PPT, a growth of thirty-nine percent. At 2,781 crores, as against 2,003 crores during last year, profit after tax for the year grew by 40%, 1,491 crores to 2,083 crores. During the year, company generated an operating free cash flow of 2,259 crores, as against 795 crores during the previous financial year. Net debt on 31st March has come down to 1,028 crores. On Q4. During the quarter, company's operating revenue grew by 24%. We are at 8,169 crores, as against 6,605 crores during last year Q4. The domestic ICE two-wheeler market company sales grew by 18% at 7.5 lakh units, as against 6.36 lakh units during Q4 of last year. The international two-wheeler market, the company sales grew by 47% at 2.36 lakh. As against 1.61 lakh during Q4 of last year, we sold 49,000 units of electric three-wheelers against last year's 43,000 units of EV. The total two-wheeler sales grew by 23%, 10.32 lakh as against 8.39 lakh, and the three-wheeler sales grew by 4%, 30,000 units as against 29,000 units last year. Profit for the quarter. The EBITDA grew by 36% at 926 crores, as against EBITDA of 680 80 crores during Q4 of last year. 
and the EBITDA margin for the quarter is 11.3% as against 10.3% during Q4 of last year. PPT for the quarter grew by 23% at 672 crores as against 547 crores during Q4 of last year. PPT for the current quarter includes a fair valuation loss of 47 crores as against a gain of 62 crores during the fourth quarter of last year. Profit after tax for the quarter grew by 18%, 485 crores as against 410 crores during Q4 of last year. On industry and the performance of uh, TV, uh, uh, TVS, uh, you know that uh, the EV Wahan industry grew by 32% over last year. The full year penetration was at 5.4% as against 4.7. Government incentives have been scaled down significantly when originally 51,000 per vehicle in the previous financial year is about 22,000 in June 2023. Further, it has come down from April 2024. The same scheme has moved into the new EMPS scheme and this is valid till 31st July 2024. TVS was able to absorb a major portion of this reduction through the cost reduction initiative, scale benefits and commodity cost reduction. The, we believe the industry will continue to grow and uh, uh, with the support from the government and improvement in the infrastructure. During last year, the EV volume grew by 100%. TVS IQ establishes a very strong brand in the EV segment with its technology less features and best in class quality. TVS IQ, I am extremely happy that we have crossed now cumulatively 3 lakh customers in India. We also expanded network. We have moved now to almost 712 touch points in India. We are happy to inform you that during the month of April, the company was awarded PLI scheme for its current two-wheelers in EV portfolio. Some of the EV products planned pipeline are in the final stages. You will be seeing new launches in the upcoming quarters, which is appealing to various customer segments. We are also extremely happy that we will be announcing multiple options in TVS IQ to provide appropriate range and price combinations with different battery capacity to our customers because this is very, very critical. This is also our insight from our customer understanding. All of you know that TVS6 was the premium electric scooter, which was a crossover, which we technologies, including cutting edge connectivity, which was showcased in various international markets. We are reaching out to those who book and they are very excited with the right experience they have got and we are starting deliveries in the next few weeks. As you are aware, during this year we have started exporting TVS IQ to few ASEAN markets and Asia markets. We strongly believe that India will emerge as a major export hub for two-wheelers and TVSM will expand in its, with its EV product sales to both the developing and developed the countries. With a well-planned product lineup on EV from TVS, the continuous improvement in the EV supply chain and infrastructure, we are confident that we will continue to be a strong player in the EV segment. On TVS credit, during the last financial year, TVS credit achieved a significant milestone. With over 1.3 crore customer base, book size crossed 25,000 crores, grew by 26%, now it is at 25,900 crores. If your credit PPT for the year grew by 49% from 512 crores during the financial year 22-23 to 763 crores. All of you know that company raised external funding during the year, demonstrates strong financial position of our company. Various digital transformation projects help the company to provide superior customer experience. Now TVSCS now offers products in expanded portfolio, financing for used car, consumer durables, new and used tractors, used commercial vehicles, and now we have started gold drawn apart from two-wheeler and three-wheeler financing. When we look at 
India GDP growth is anticipated to surpass initial estimates with expectations of around 6.5 percent. India will be one of the major economies in terms of the growth. The growth is underpinned by the key socio-economic fundamentals and proactive and consistent policy by the government of India and RBI. And we are expecting that the monsoon this year is likely to be normal. The ongoing geopolitical issues may affect the supply chain. Presently, we are not envisaging any major disruptions due to this. In the last three years, we have seen some of these disruptions in supply chain and we were able to alleviate most of these constraints. The company manages a diverse, multi-sourced global supply chain to counteract these risks. We are expecting this year the two-wheeler industry will have a healthy growth. We expect the growth to come from urban and rural start improving this year. During the last financial year, the product whatever we have launched has helped us to significantly grow better than the industry, primarily led by TVS Razor amongst many, many products like Jupiter 125. We are very confident that the growth momentum will continue this year. In the national two-wheeler market, we anticipate to see certain level of recovery in this year. Some of the major African markets are showing some recovery, some continued with challenges. We continue to upgrade our product portfolio with a lot of customer attractive features best in class quality and this will further strengthen our position in the international market. This year, you will see new products from the company, both in ICE and in EV. Coming to IV, we are expecting three-wheeler, IV three-wheeler, we are expecting Africa to have muted growth in the first half and expect recovery during the second half of the year. We could see positive momentum coming from LATAM and Southeast Asian market. On EBITDA, I am very sure all of you would have seen during the last five years, company was able to consistently improve EBITDA from 19, 2019, 20. EBITDA was at 8.2% and now this quarter we are at 11.3. Continued focus on cost reduction, continued growth with uh, new products, premiumization, strong brand and all the strong brands and IB help, help the company to achieve this. Company has invested in various digital technologies, software, electronics and innovation across areas to improve customer experience, retail and service management, manufacturing, supply chain, best in class features to all our new customers and new products. On commodities, last year we could see softening of commodities. There are some increases during this quarter. Pretty confident that with the kind of product range what we have and sustained focus on better product mix and cost reduction initiatives, we are confident that our EBITDA journey will continue to improve quarter after quarter. Ownership experience, product quality, cutting edge technology and the customer delight factor coming from JD Power. We are very, very confident that with Apache, Jupiter, Jupiter 125, IQ, Raider, Intark and the Star Range and HLX and TVS King and Ronin, we will continue to grow faster than the industry, both in domestic and international. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Chandra Molli Muthai from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, and thank you for taking my questions. Uh, my first question is on the PLI scheme comments that you had made in the prepared remarks. 
Uh, so it appears that um, across the industry, there's been between three to four percent price hikes after the FAME two subsidies have been reduced. Um, and now that um, you are eligible for PLI scheme subsidies, potentially you know 13 to 15 percent subsidies going forward. And, and there's more IQ products on the way in terms of leveraging the EV platforms. Just trying to understand uh, what sort of time frames you have in mind for a potential positive EBITDA or EBITDA break even in the electric two-wheeler business, just keeping these factors in mind. There are two important points uh, uh, in, in the EV, EV space. Um, thanks to the PLI scheme, I think that will definitely help the company. Uh, we are also now, based on our learning in the market, the ice cube uh, will have um, more multiple options to the customers with the different battery capacity to provide appropriate range and price combination to our customer because that is very, very critical. This is one. Second, as I told you, we are positive in uh, contribution. At this point of time, since we are investing in many new products, I think we need to continue to invest in R&D technology in digital and analytics in this area. But I'm pretty confident that the new product with uh, domestic and then going into the international market, both developing and developed, systematically we can increase the EBITDA and we can first move into positive territory. But what is heartening is the positive contribution. Got it, that's helpful. Uh, my second question is just on the comments you made on um, more options to be available to customers on the iCube. So just, I think in, in the past two to two and a half years, we have spoken about rough run rate of potential one new launch or one new product refresh on the two-wheeler side per quarter. So is that the sort of run rate we have in mind for FY24? And if you could just uh, give us some color on, on what to expect uh, for customers from TVS and FY25. Um, on both the IC premium as well as the electric two-wheeler pipeline? See, the, the more options on the current IQ will be available very shortly. The new product, whatever I, I highlighted, the new product, definitely you will see in this financial year, both in IS and EV, okay, they are in advanced stage. That's helpful. And just lastly, a couple of housekeeping questions. If you could just um, uh, explain um, the negative other income this quarter, where that's coming from, and then also just the spares and the exports uh, revenue for the quarter, please. See, the I think, no, sorry, sorry. I was I didn't understand the question. See, the negative 46 crores is mainly because of a notional loss on fair valuation of investments held by the company. In the past, the fair valuation gain was accounted in the last year. And if you see, the last quarter, the other income was positive at 70 crores, where we had a realized gain on sale and the uh, notional gain of, uh, on, on, on fair valuation of investments. And this quarter, there is a loss which is absolutely notional with regard to 46 crores of fair valuation of an investment held by the company. Got it. And just the spares revenue and the exports revenue for the quarter, please. Just a, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, spare parts and then exports. That's correct. correct. Uh, I think the international business is about 2,038 crores. Uh, spare parts, uh, just, uh, just a minute. Spare parts for the quarter is about 815 crores. Got it, got it. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amyan Pirani from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yes, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my uh, question again is on the EV side, but you know, on a potential launch timeline for the three-wheeler EV, because I think that is also something that we have been working on. So can you give any, you know, timelines as to by when we are thinking of this launch and whether this will be mostly a domestic focused product or are there 
you know uh, plans to export that also whenever we do launch it it is also in the advanced stage and uh, this products uh, on ev will be uh, not only for india but also for many other markets in the international market okay okay so so this financial year should we expect the three wheeler ev sir yes 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 okay okay uh secondly on the ice side a uh, two part question um the 100 while scooters while ice scooters as a whole have still continued to grow despite evs um how is the difference between the 110 cc and 125 cc are we starting to see some pressure on the 110 cc scooter and what's your expectation going forward and secondly uh, you know over the last few years you have launched quite a few ice products and you know address a lot of the white spaces so when we are thinking of more ice launches is there any specific segment that you are looking at uh, for the next say 12 to 18 months on the ice launches uh, i'll go step by step i think overall scooter according to me in the industry the the the, the segment share of scooters will go up because scooters have got its own advantage and uh, we should know that uh, current uh, 30 32% will go up so expansion in the scooter category will definitely happen okay and that will have both ice and uh, ev this is number one number two uh, this customer uh, you know when we when people have 110 and uh, 125 according to me both will grow the reason is there are many uh, see two wheelers have got the unique advantage and especially scooters have got the unique advantage of uh, both men and women and both urban and semi urban and i saw so now getting into rural because the road infrastructure definitely in india is improving now so that is one of the critical reasons why scooter category is growing a head of any other categories number 1 number 2 new the thanks to the population and the demography i think those people who are in 110 they want to upgrade and they will move to 125 okay and this is not natural okay but more people will get into 110 because there are enough young people who wants to start the the two wheeler experience and two wheeler uh you know because the public transport challenges and india growing with the population and you know the flexibility what a scooter provides even in urban cities so i am of the view that you will see growth in both 125 and 110 okay because of the customer segment demography and the opportunity to grow and flexibility what it offers i hope i have answered you Yes, so that's that's very helpful. And sir, if you could, you know, uh, shed some light on potential launches on the IC side, is there a particular category that we should be looking at? The opportunities are there. Significant opportunities are there. I can tell you. And uh, we constantly look at the white spaces, and uh, this will be 24, 25 will be a very very exciting year. That's why I said you will see both in IC and in EV. You will see launches from the company, which are fairly in that one stage. Great, sir. Thanks for that. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pramod Kumar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity, sir. Uh, and, and my first question is uh, more of a follow-up on spare parts because we've seen that despite having probably the fastest revenue growth or volume growth in the industry for the last five, ten years, your spare parts growth uh, is not that. Uh, what do you say uh, about the trend line? Uh, because we've seen some of your peers grow their spare parts exposure from like eight nine percent to somewhere like fourteen fifteen percent of revenue. But for you, spare parts is still well below the ten percent and which is average. So, uh, is there a uh, is there something which you're leaving uh, on the table here in terms of potentially uh, doing more spare parts uh, which can help the business? I'm, I'm just trying to understand or reconcile the uh, divergent trends on spare parts in the last three four years between you and the peers. Uh. So if you can just help us understand this aspect better. I I, I don't always I respect my competitors uh, because uh, I learn from them quite a lot. On ours, I always look at uh, you know we have hub and spoke model and we look at uh, the primary sales, secondary sales, and the stocks. Uh, so based on that, when we look at it, 
I am not saying that we are meeting full demand, but our service levels, I don't think our customers have to wait for uh, spare parts. So we look at uh, what is appropriate in the market and we are able to grow. Hmm. Uh, maybe there are opportunities to grow, but uh, you know we will always keep the retailers and the operate part stockists and our dealers with the right kind of stock. Because it's very, very critical that um, we should not overstock the people and uh, it should, it should work as a pool system. That is what we focus on. Okay, when opportunities, definitely the opportunities are there to grow. But uh, we are not missing from the customer satisfaction point of view in terms of the spare part. And thanks a lot, Sasha. And second question on the electrification strategy. Uh, because uh, what we see is like your competition have done multiple launches, multiple round of price curves, discounts and all of that. And you've been far more disciplined in that sense, and the market has also had a much more better than what one would have feared, uh, given the competitive landscape. So, how what explains this, uh, and and how should one look at the uh, kind of addressable market expansion which you can aim for with new launches? What you're talking about, and uh, related to that is on the three wheeler opportunity because more than 90% of your three wheelers are exported, um, uh, and and domestic three wheeler ice franchise has not been that great. And how could that change with the electrification shifts? Uh, and 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 also, if you can confirm uh, your, uh, whether it's you're going to be uh, foraying into the, uh, cargo three wheelers as well with the electrification uh, uh, e three wheeler platform launch. The e three wheeler will definitely give us an opportunity in the domestic market, and uh, there is a great opportunity for us uh, in in the domestic uh, three wheeler space. On um, the overall. EV strategy, um, we always uh, look at the customer and uh, we can we can give them, uh, that's why I said you can look at what kind of options, multiple options with the different battery capacity on TVS IQ and appropriate range with price combination to our customer because it is very, very important that uh, the customers respect the brand. They look at overall uh, engagement with the company and overall going forward. So, uh, while there may be challenges, we believe that it is more important to build the brand in a big way and we are in the right track. However, from the learning in the market and the customer requirements, I think we will have more uh, variants and multiple options for our customers. That is the way we look at it. So on the uh, three-wheeler side, sir, domestic, uh, how big that opportunity could be? Because you've done very well on the export side, taken market shares meaningfully. Uh, so how in, how uh, 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 how uh, big could be the three-wheeler domestic opportunity here, sir? It's, it's, a, it's a very important area. We will uh, definitely focus this year to improve our, our presence in the domestic market with the new product launches uh, in EV. So we will definitely focus on that. Last question to basic answer, sir. Uh, sir, you, uh, you, uh, on the recent uh, non converted debenture, if you can just help us understand the thought process behind that because you do have a 1,400 crores of debt on the balance sheet when you're committing to a large payout. Uh, so how should we as analysts look at this commitment and, and what does it imply for your CapEx requirement uh, investment uh, going forward and, and, and also uh, on the cash flow implications? So if you can just help us understand the thought process there. Sure. Sure. Before getting into this... Uh uh, specific question, let me just try to give you an overall picture. Last year, we have generated an operating free cash flow of around 2,300 crores. And after meeting the capex and the investments, whatever we have done overseas, I have reduced my debt by 1,000 crores. So that's the first important point that after considering the capex, after considering my investments, I have repaid, reduced my debt by 1,000 crores. This is the first thing. Now coming to what we are talking about, this NCRPS, non-convertible, redeemable, non sorry, non-convertible preferred shares uh, as a bonus shares. What we are contemplating is uh, an issuance of around 1,900 crores, which carries a coupon of 6%. And this is subject to uh, an NCLT process where approvals will be obtained. And it is, it is a bonus. We do have sufficient reserves. And this is payable after receipt of NCLT order 12 months after that. Therefore, this outflow is expected to happen 18 to 24 months from now. And we are very confident of generating cash flows 
which will be met out of the free cash flow generated by the company and uh, this is this is uh, a bonus to all the shareholders without exception and sir uh, what is the implication on your capex and investments for fi25 and also if you can talk a bit more about your subsidiary performance ex of financing basically northern and the european operation as to how are they shaping up because we are losing money there as to how uh, what is the outlook uh, going forward there for fi25 sir See, what is most important uh, is to look at uh, North and which I highlighted. We are designing, developing, and please understand, in this financial year, last financial year, we have invested almost 88 crores on design and development, which is completely considered as an expense during Q4. You know, so uh, uh, the these investments, I am very, very sure that we will have a series of products which will. Con- you know, which will definitely is going to help Norton. It's a brilliant brand. And once we have the clear product pipeline, and I'm very sure that you will see this product hitting the market during 25-26, uh, towards the 25-26 financial year. And uh, kindly give us a few more quarters because very, very critical in the premium and super premium to have a good set of products. This is number one. And uh, the other subsidiaries like uh, European e-bike companies, all of you know that Europe's uh, economy continues to have many challenges, which is affecting all industries including our SCMG and other companies. Okay, and uh, you know the selling season has started, okay, and uh, we, are, we are very sure that this year the losses will come down comparing the previous year. But these are investments for future. So we have to look at it in a comprehensive way. And sir, to sum it all, do you still expect to continue to improve your profitability uh, 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 with all these uh, advents and tailwinds what you talked about uh, going into FI 25-26? You have seen our, you have, you have seen our uh, EBITDA journey from 8.2% to 11.3%. Yes, sir. And you have seen our top line growing. We have seen our market share, market, uh, the overall volumes growing ahead of the industry. So definitely this journey will continue. And the way we have uh, continued to invest in our people, uh, in software, in electronic, digital, analytics, I think these are all investments for the future. So we will continue to invest in the right areas, including the brands, yet grow our EBITDA. Thanks a lot. And wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gunjan Prithiani from BOA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi team. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, just uh, following up on earlier question itself, uh, can you share, you know, guide what will be the capex and investment needs for fiscal 25, um, you know, including Norton um, and the European bicycle business as well? Capex, capex will be around. Uh, all, all. I think we are investing uh, next year, this, this year, sorry, 24, 25. We are uh, investing. Capex will be around 1,000 crore because this is uh, including all our ice and EV and all the new products. And uh, we are investment outflow will be slightly lesser than the last year, maybe around uh, 1,100 to 1,200 crore. Which includes uh, TVS CS also, we will be uh, investing slightly higher than what we said. We may be investing about 300 to 400 crores because there are some latest changes in the capital adequacy ratio and norms prescribed by RBA so, uh, for unsecured lending. So, uh, right, Jay Singh? Correct, absolutely right. Because the reason circular where uh, we need to have uh, more uh, uh, capital requirement with regard to the unsecured lending. So this has necessitated uh, an additional investment of uh, uh, 200 to 300 crore overall, not additional overall investment this year, 300 crores. Okay, okay, got it. And um, sir, is it possible to sort of, you know, we know the performance of TVS credit and of course it's doing very well, you pointed 500 crores or PBT, but is it possible to sort of also give us a breakup of how much is you know the loss in Norton, which I, you know, which you, 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 you said that there will be a product cycle which hits in fiscal 26. So I think that we are very comfortable with that. You know, there will be a product coming through. So in this TVS Singapore, the loss does seem very big. But if you can split it 
with between northern and the rest of the subs it will help us you know gauge you know what is the impact of northern and which will reverse going ahead Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a, just a minute. Sorry, I mean. Yeah, like, yeah, sure. Not, not sure, I thought I lost the line. Yeah. No, no, no. Northern, Northern is around 80 crores for this quarter, and um, um, as as explained earlier, all these have gone only for development related expenditure. Uh, though for accounting compulsion, it is accounted as a loss, but otherwise, all the efforts, resources, and money are spent only for the development related expenses. Which, as what KNR explained. in the four to six quarters things will uh, uh, settle down with the product launches there so uh, that's how it is got it and second question sir is on apache now you did speak about 125 cc radar and all have done really very well but apache seems to be losing little bit in the premium segment uh, you know is, what is the thought process there are we looking to uh sort of launch more variants in that segment as well or do some intervention any thoughts around that one correction apache has done extremely well fortunately wahan doesn't give category wise uh, split but if you look at overall apache you know has done extremely well uh, you would have seen our uh, even in april last year also we have done extremely well apache is very well respected uh, brand uh today so we are happy and you will definitely see you know these are brands uh, where definitely you will see new variant new product because one of the strengths of tvs is to constantly give us uh, you will have seen rtr 310 so definitely you will see uh, the new product and new variant okay closer to the launch only i can give you exactly split but that's why it says 24 25 will be an exciting year in terms of total ev and uh, ice uh, launches okay and lastly sir any comments on the rural on your moped portfolio because you did sound a bit more optimistic on the industry in your initial remarks so are you picking up anything on the on the rural side or uh, lower end you know bottom of the pyramid recovery rural slowly and steadily changing i'm able to see some recovery happening okay i'm hoping that this year even though we are all going through very very high temperature severe heat waves i'm expecting this year monsoon to be normal i think that will definitely help and uh, help the rural to move much faster so 24 25 we are hoping that you will see better recovery from rural unlike what we have seen in the last year okay thank you so much Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kapil Singh from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. I just wanted your thoughts on EVs uh, in terms of the um, operating environment and also profitability. You know, at one on one side we are seeing a drop in cost. At the other side, we are also seeing market pressures. So, how is your profitability evolved through the year? Is it on an improving trend? Is it steady? If you could give some color. See, what is most important is what I highlighted. TVS IQ is one of the preferred choices by the customer, and it is definitely the customers are extremely happy. Especially the owners are extremely happy. This is number one. Now we are also planning to come with variants depending upon the customer usage of multiple. you know multiple choices to the customer because there also customers have got different range requirements battery capacity requirements so uh, this is also second third we will also come back with the new product this year and as i highlighted we have started now exporting last year uh, i am i am overall very confident that the top lines will systematically go up of course there are headwinds in terms of uh, unprecedented discounting uh but we want to be very steady and we will look at the customer and we are looking at uh, you know very smooth transition of uh, putting more products looking at the customer segment and growing the market 
Okay, and I'm very sure that uh, to 24-25 you will see more of that, and we will systematically and build it up. Is it profitable, uh, sir, or at this point it is diluting the margins? I told you it is an investment. I don't look at it as a dilution at this point of time. Any 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 investment initially there will be challenges, but the good news is in contribution wise it is positive. Sure. So you left behind. You start uh, looking at the new products and you start growing the top line. And also we are investing in many of the technologies which will be also be useful for us. For example, whatever I spoke about the digital connectivity, many of these things are required for the customer, whether EV technology or ICE technology. So these are all investments, not only for EV in my opinion, this will also help our ICE portfolio. So overall, whatever we are investing in software or in, uh, in electronics or digital or connectivity or any kind of such new technologies will be definitely useful to delight the customer in the overall portfolio of TVM. Understood. So you are also observing the customer behavior very closely. Uh, just wanted your view, like over the next, let's say, five years, do you see a point where i-scooters as a market starts to decline and it starts shifting to EVs? Or do you think even in five years, both EVs and i-scooters will continue to grow? My, my first opinion is this 30% or 32% of the scooter category will further expand. Okay, it, it will definitely go to 35% and maybe 40% uh, in the period what we are talking. So according to me, there is a great opportunity to both grow ICE as well as EV because customers uh, will choose uh, the technologies and depending upon their convenience and comfort, they will choose whichever technology. According to me, customers are not... Uh, they are agnostic to the technology. They have uses, usages. Depending upon the usages, some people will prefer the EV, some people will prefer the ICE. So we should be uh, investing in both and making sure that we capture or keep this opportunity on both EV and ICE. Sure, sir. If you could give uh, just finally some data points on price increases taken in Q4 and Q1 and also the uh, direction on commodity price movement. So far, I don't think we have taken any prices. Either. Just a minute, just give me a minute. Yeah, I don't think we have taken up any prices in Q4. We have taken some marginal price increases, I think, in the month of April. I think about 0.3%, something like that we have taken up, uh, because there are some increases in some of the commodities, not so high, but very, very mild, so we have taken about 0.3%. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Have a good evening. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask question. <coughs> the next question is from the line of Raghunandan Enel from Novama Research. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, sir, with FI25 expected to be a healthy growth year in domestic market, uh, wanted to get a little more sense on the rural side. Uh, how do you see the rural recovery to pan out and how would that help the entry level segment where you have products uh, like the Star CEs? Uh, would you expect that segment on a low base to see uh, a similar growth uh, compared to industry or would you still feel that scooters and premium executive motorcycles will do better than the overall industry growth? Um, first I will answer about rural. Uh, like I said, rural definitely we are able to see some positive momentum. Uh, my assumption is this year the monsoon uh, is likely to be normal. That will help in uh, more positive confidence in the rural market. Already there are no, you know, closures now which is uh, the activity level are far, far higher. And rural is more self-employed if you look at it. And uh, there the self-employment is moving up now. And if you look at uh, post-COVID, the customers were postponing the buy. I think they will come back. That is one key hypothesis this year. But please understand, rural doesn't mean that only entry level. Okay, today rural India, if you look at smartphones, you compare, so 
so you can't say rural means entry level they are also they are very aspirational and they will look at uh, products like apache or raider or entor i think they are very aspirational there are set of customers who are budget customers they are very clear they look at the price tag and they will look at only that and if it is more of uh, entry level and people look at uh, uh, for self employed then they you use it for utility purpose but please understand their young generation in the rural they want only aspirational products so it's it's not according to me appropriate to say that rural means entry level okay so this is my understanding of the customer segment in the rural uh thank you sir and roughly how how big would be the rural portion retail financing also making huge huge impact in 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 ability of this customers to look at you know a little bit higher priced better in terms of aspirational product even in the rural got it sir and uh, so so that premiumization helped by retail financing uh how would be the share of rural in your overall domestic sales broadly would it be 45 50% and also if you can share the financing ratio the financing ratio currently is around uh, just a minute is around uh, 56% rr of uh, penetration for tvs motor is about 56% this is organized uh, i think there will be some local financing also happening on top of it which is uh, depending upon the dealer and the local financing company but 56% is a healthy number and i think rural also similar uh, in terms of uh, financing got it and uh, the share of tvs credit tvs credit is about uh, 40% in this got it sir and rural share in your domestic sale would that be in the range of 45 50% yeah around that around that around that because uh, like i said uh, the rural uh, the composition of our premium product scooter we are also seeing they are also moving well and uh, the infrastructure investments in the rural is also helping us today the number of good roads what you see in the rural and the speed at which it is getting implemented is also improving so that is also helping two wheelers got it sir uh, and sir like uh, on the executive premium side you have done very well and one of the lucrative segments for the industry is cruisers uh, ronin is selling about 2 2 and 1/2 thousand units every month so how do you see or how do you target improving position in cruisers in terms of products network riding ecosystem would you bring more new products under the ronin platform or northern brand in sorry to interrupt you sir may i request you to join the queue for your further questions As yeah that was my last question okay uh, ronin ronin has started doing well and we are very confident that it will go further these are opportunities for tvs because this is space where we have just started okay and uh, there is great opportunity in this in this category Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonal Gupta from HSBC Asset Management India. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, sir, and thanks for taking my question. And congrats on your consistent performance and improvement over the years. Uh, so, just on uh, trying to understand on the EV side, right? Like, like you mentioned that there is a clearly a very aggressive price competition happening in the space and that has uh, sort of dented your market share as well uh, although i mean I, i think it's still a respectable performance but just trying to understand if the environment was to persist like this then uh, i mean how do you plan to address this so will you be addressing this through a variance which narrow the price gap or i mean like what is going to be the strategy for tvs in terms of the ev to wheel space two things i wanted to highlight uh, if you look at our march and april the same two went into the emps and we were very clear so we moderated our supplies into the market because we don't want any of our dealers to be under pressure and post that april you have seen our dispatches and uh, now 
the transition is almost done and our market share are almost every day you will be seeing our market share going up. Okay, this is number one. Number two, based on the customer understanding, we want to also offer at uh, whatever I highlighted, you know, multiple options uh, with the different battery capacity and that will also help the customers with appropriate range and price combination. That is the, low, that is the second strategy. Third strategy is the new product. Fourth strategy, we are also going to step by, step by step increase the availability in India, overall India. And fourth and fifth strategy is going to be getting into many developed markets and developing markets. So it's a very systematic approach, you know, how, how we are going to build it up. And we are investing behind technology, people, software, and uh, many of the things are completely designed and developed by us. So we are pretty confident that this is the right way to build it up. Got it, sir. So just on the CAPEX and investment side, because this has consistently been at a fairly high level of around like 1,000 crores for the last few years and again investments in excess of 1,000 crores. So could you give us some more sense, right, like how much of this uh, CAPEX is product development versus, uh, I mean, like capacity enhancement versus some localization? I mean, just trying to get a more sense on where the money is going, right? See, most of them are in the new product development. Okay, because manufacturing, we did about 4.2 million and uh, we have capacity up to 5 million. Okay, but in the case of, uh, for example, some of the EV, we have our battery management system and we have the battery cell and battery management inside the company. So we have established lines there. So I would say that capacity enhancement related to the new product, maybe internally about 20%, remaining about 60-70% maybe in the new product development and also we are investing behind digital and technology. This is one area we are also focusing. So overall if you ask me, more than 80% will be new product, digital, new technologies, okay, maybe about 15% will be on the manufacturing line because so capacity is not the problem, but EV, there are, there are investments on battery management system, the line, and, uh, you know, the local uh, TVFX, for example, we have a motor line inside. So, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a broad estimate. Right. And, and similarly on the investments, right, like, like you mentioned on the TVS credit is going to be about 300 crores and uh, maybe 300, 400 crores and is going into Norton as well given the current run rate uh, of loss that we're seeing. Absolutely right, so, absolutely right. About 400 crores in TVS, CS, maybe 400 crores in Norton. And uh, the other other new, new you know, projects, whatever we have started, they need some supplementing. So I'll put together about, uh, you know, another 400 crores. So you can say 400, 400, 400, something like that. For it. And just lastly, like you've said that uh, international expansion, like you're looking like you've launched TVSX in Europe. So... I mean, like, is that going to be a calibrated thing or are we investing significantly for that as well uh, in terms of the international and developed market expansion? At this point of time, we are starting with some of the new products, whatever we have, but more we get into those markets, we have to look at and understand that we are trying to get good distributors there and then try to leverage the existing products. But going forward, maybe we may have to look at some new products, but we can always leverage other products from India, we can look at our AV, we can also look at Norton. So the range and the, you know, the, 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 the kind of products what we can get from India, Indonesia and EV plus Norton, that is going to give us a, 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 one of the best ranges and which we can look at going forward into the developed market. Okay, sir. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the question. Can we take the last question, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pramod Kumar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks a lot for the opportunity again. And so just some clarification on the new uh, electric uh, two-wheeler launch. I just want to clarify that iCube uh, is the existing product where you're launching new variants and there will be another EV platform on uh, for two-wheelers. Is the understanding right, sir, which should get launched this year? The iCube, I said, you will see more variants depending upon the customer needs on range. Okay, that that will be you will see immediately. 
But the hmm. new products, what I highlighted is on both two V, uh, so that will be in EV and I. That will be during the financial year. Okay, so we are talking about two different product uh, products here. Uh, that's good. And sir, uh, uh, on CNG, any thoughts sir on the two wheeler side? Because uh, uh, there is increasing CNG distribution, which is uh, which is uh, which has been focused by the government. And do you see opportunity for CNG as a fuel on two wheelers? I think we have to closely look at these are all opportunities. Multi fuel, you know, uh, EV is one such option. CNG is another option. Already we are present in CNG three wheeler, okay, and uh, flex fuel is another option. So we have to look at multiple options, okay. Once we are very firmed up, then I can share with you more details about which are the products and how we are looking at. So, uh, so okay, just to understand, uh, just to uh, confirm it, you you have the capability on the R&D side, but you will act on it based on the uh, based on how you see the uh, customer response. Is that understanding right? The strength of TVS is strong R&D. You have seen the strength of R&D, and you have seen the kind of product design and development capability, and uh, the way we have launched the products and how they are successful. That's the capability of TVS. Yeah, and uh, so, so sorry to uh, uh, because uh, uh, one question on the radar side, sir, because you talk about increasing aspiration of rural customers. Uh, is there a data available with you for the 40 or 1000 data what you sell? How many of them are actually first time buyers of motorcycles or first time buyers of a two wheeler as a customer? See, my, my experience shows that uh, uh, the, their, their biggest challenge is the budget customer. They are not able to, they look at only the price tag. But there are enough proportion of customers I'm seeing more and more they look at the premium products. Hmm. Okay, and the retail financing is one of the enablers which is helping them to look at definitely, for example, Jupiter 125, NTOR, and uh, maybe entry level Apache, you know, 162V, that kind of product. Okay, they may not look at a 310 initially, but they are able to look at products like Raider, definitely. So that hmm. transition is happening in India. The transition is happening. So the comeback in the first time buyer may not necessarily be only in 100cc commuter motorcycles. Uh, as in when the rural car markets revive and demand comes back, you could see that coming debuting even in the uh, uh, 125 cc product category also, right? The like what we see. The best analogy I have seen is smartphone. You know. Hmm. So uh, India, India is really aspirational. Even rural is also aspirational. And and so uh, last one uh, request, uh, like some of your peers also call out the uh, the losses in the EV side separately because. It's an industry which is not going to be turning profitable anytime soon. So it, uh, spreading that out gives us a better visibility in your underlying ICE margins, uh, where you have already expanded reasonably. But and given the fact that this quarter you had elevated EV sales and higher discounts also towards March, uh, uh, if you can just help us understand, uh, uh, has ICE margins moved to the 12 to 13 percent corridor as we speak? Because you do have reasonably high EV exposure. Say we look at EV as an investment, and totally we have improved quarter after quarter our EBITDA margin. Yes, sir. Our objective is to delight the customer. That is why you have seen the JD Power results. And quarter after quarter, you have seen with right investments behind product, brand, people, capability, technology, we are able to deliver consistently our EBITDA. So that is the way we look at. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Fair enough, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. I would like to thank all of you. I think I wanted to highlight that 23-24. Thanks to all the customers. We have got the highest revenue of 31,776 crores and highest profit of 2,781 crores. Our quarterly operating revenue grew by 24%. And with our unwavering focus on consumers, quality, we are confident of continuing this growing ahead of the industry. We will continue to leverage scale benefits and focus premiumization and sustain material cost reduction. It will enable us to improve our EBITDA. Yet we will invest in the right technology and people and products. We are very happy that we are continuously improving our EBITDA over the last three years. And thank you everyone for your confidence and we continue to deliver consistent performance top line and in EBITDA. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Batliwala and Karani Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your line.